Grace and peace to you. I'm John Collette, one of the pastors at Madison Street United Methodist Church, and I'm coming to you from the church on behalf of our congregation and our senior pastor, Reverend Harriet Bryan. This is a process we're undertaking of congregational conversation over a period of time. We're calling this process Imagine because we're trying to imagine with God's inspiration what our future can be uh, as a downtown congregation with a lot of, a lot of history, a lot of resources, and a, a great population here in greater Clarksville area with which to minister. Uh, this is session two of Imagine, and I will uh, give you just a little catch-up time. Uh, the first session, we tried to dig into Scripture to, to glean the best we can. What is, what is God's mission? What is God trying to do uh, in the world, across the world, for all time? And we zeroed in on God's call of Abraham and Sarah that's recorded for us in chapter uh, 12 of Genesis, the first three verses, where God asked them to leave their comfortable setting and go to a new land that God was going to show them and to enter a covenant through which God would bless uh, all of creation for all time. And the, the commission that came to Abraham and Sarah from God was, I will bless you that you will be a blessing, and in you and through you I will bless all of the families of earth. We believe that is the starting point for our understanding of mission uh, in the greater Clarksville area. We want to be a congregation of blessing to others uh, through ourselves as individuals and through the programming and the life we ha have here uh, at the church, at our home base. So that's the uh, review of session one. Uh, session two now is going to go a little deeper into the ministry of blessing, which includes the ministry of hospitality. And we take as our starting text for that, Genesis 18, where uh, God calls Abraham and Sarah again through strangers that they welcome into their, into their place of being. Uh, so before we get into this uh, part of Imagine as the deep hospitality of the scripture of God and of Jesus, let me, let me offer a prayer. Oh Lord, we pray your blessings upon our time together our thinking together, our study, our inspiration. Uh, may you inspire our hearts and our minds, and may we imagine with you the future you have in store for us. In Christ's name and for his mission, we pray. Amen. Uh, in our uh, first session and also in this session, we remind ourselves that, that we need to understand the why uh, of our mission, the why of the church, the why of the people of Jesus uh, the why of the people of the Bible. And we believe, as I said, that we find our starting point in God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah uh, to be a blessing to others and to bless all the families of earth through their faith descendants. And that is largely the story of the Hebrew scriptures uh, coming into the life of Jesus. So why do we exist? How will we behave in our existence? And what do we do? How will we succeed? And all of those things are part of what we're discussing. So we, uh, we go further with this idea that we exist not just for ourselves. We, we don't exist for ourselves. We, we exist for God's mission to the world uh, for all time and all places. And uh, so that's what we're trying to find uh, our center in, in that mission as, as is God's mission. Uh, it's a helpful statement that comes from some of this kind of work uh, that, that focuses us quite well. The statement is this, the church does not have a mission, rather the mission of God has a church. That orientation helps us really grasp the reality that we exist entirely for God's mission to the people of the greater uh, Clarksville region. So that's what we're continuing to be about. Uh, it's also helpful that we understand the Hebrew and the biblical understanding of who God is, what God is like, and what God does. 
And the very core scriptures that tell us that are in texts like Deuteronomy 6 or Psalm 103, 8. Uh, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. That's Israel's way of naming the character of God. And their mantra throughout their worship life and repeated so many times in the Psalms, their mantra is, the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. And we have other texts in the Hebrew Scriptures that remind us of, of what we're about as God's people. Uh, for example, uh, the prophet Micah 6, 8, where uh, Micah is hearing what God requires of us. And it's not animal sacrifices or it's not necessarily just our giving or our presence. But uh, Micah says uh, that the Lord requires us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. And walking kindly and humbly with God means we do that with our neighbors. So uh, session two is going to help us go deeper into the life of blessing as it is a, a, a comprehensive way to understand God's will, God's good will, upon all of God's creation. And that is God's will of blessing. And when we understand blessing more fully in the Hebrew sense, it's the fullness of life. It's uh, goodwill, peace, health, prosperity, uh, happiness. And the way Jesus put that in John 10:10 10, 10 is, I, am, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The abundant life is, is the same thing that the Hebrew text is talking about, blessing. So we want to imagine the ways that we can be blessings to others in our community as persons and certainly as a congregation. Uh, it, it means that our life in ministry with God and Jesus is fundamentally about relationships. And, and that's how we receive one another, how we... Uh, get to know one another better, how we become the supportive, supportive community of faith, love, and hope, uh, as Paul would say. And we know that relationships are both what we do here in the activities of the church, certainly our worship and our groups, but it's what we do out there in the community, relationships. And we want to cultivate relationships in a spiritual way. Uh, now, we, we don't go ask people uh, about their relationship to God at first. We befriend them. And then in the context of befriending and supportive uh, hospitality, we, uh, we try to lead people spiritually uh, toward the life of Christ and the life of the church. Now, let's look for a moment uh, at the Genesis 18, the key text for this session. Uh, Abraham and Sarah, you remember, had been promised a child which they had never been able to have. God promised them a child. If they would live in covenant with him, he would bless them. And But years went by before that blessing came true, and they certainly had times of wondering if, if God was going to fulfill the promise of giving them a child. Uh, 20 years go by, and Abraham one day was sitting in his tent, in the front of his tent, in the shade, the heat of the day, and strangers walked by. Uh, this was a, a, a rural area, and uh, sojourners and strangers would be traveling through, and these strangers uh, were greeted by Abraham. He got up from the tent, went out to greet them, uh, and said, let me host you, let me provide water for you, let me wash your feet, let me give you bread. And eventually, uh, Abraham said to his wife, Sarah, let's throw a feast for these guests. And, and they were guests as strangers. But in the context of their hospitality, these strangers announced to Abraham and Sarah that by this time next year, you will have a son. You will have a baby. You will have a son. And so in hospitality of Abraham and Sarah, they received the blessings of the guests, the blessings of the strangers. This story illustrates 
for us the profound nature of hospitality as a way we receive one another, we receive uh, guests, we receive even strangers uh, as an act of God. And in the midst of that receiving, the, the guests, the strangers can actually bless us and extend promises to us. That's the paradigm story related to hospitality. Now, in, in Jesus, we believe, embodied the complete hospitality of God. And Jesus took that out to the people in the villages and the towns, uh, the cities and the rural areas, uh, to the rich and the poor. And he enacted God's hospitality of receiving others into his life that he may give his life to them. When we look at the root word, uh, of uh, guests and hosts in the Greek language in which the New Testament was written. Uh, the, the root word is gosti, uh, would be transliterated uh, G-H-O-S-T-I, gosti. And that word, interestingly enough, can be translated both guest and host. And so at the depths of hospitality, the distinction between guest and host actually goes away and we forget which one is the host and which one is the guest. That's the nature of the hospitality of the church because in the beginning of our life with Christ we're all guests. We are invited into Christ by Christ. We're invited into his church uh, including our church. So we are first guests in the graciousness of Christ and God and then we learn to become hosts for others. It's a fascinating dynamic to uh, study uh, the nature of hospitality as a part of being a blessing for others and hosting the world on God's behalf. When we then imagine our own hospitality, uh, we're doing that in, in, in a comprehensive way. That is, hospitality from us as individuals to others in whatever context we meet them and encounter them. And it certainly speaks of the hospitality we want to render to one another and to guests in the activities of the church, not the least of which is Sunday worship, of course. And in all of our groups, all of our activities and our outreach ministries, we're extending hospitality to a great extent. Uh, we stop to think about in our Imagine sessions on Wednesday night, uh, how do we need to improve our hospitality on Sundays? And we decided we need more greeters to uh, be there for guests as they come in different entrances of the church. Our complex is a, a city block uh, in size, and we need to be able to greet uh, as Christ would greet us, and we need to practice that hospitality in our, in our gatherings, in our groups, our Sunday school classes, for example, and other groups that meet uh, in other ways uh, through the week or through the life of the church. We also uh, noted in our imagining that we need to create new groups because uh, new people can find their place more quickly, uh, studies indicate, in a new group than trying to become a part of an existing group. So starting new groups is a, another part of our ministry of, of blessing and hospitality. To this topic of blessing and hospitality, we can add some of the great texts of the, of the New Testament. Uh, and one of those is the Good Samaritan story recorded in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, toward the end of that first chapter. Uh, and that story, you remember, is about a person who was attacked by robbers on the road from Jerusalem to Jericho, was left, uh, left for dead in the ditch, and uh, there were passers-by, one being a priest who did not stop to help, uh, one being a Levite, that is uh, uh, one who in charge of the people keeping the rules of the faith. Uh, he did not stop, but it was the unlikely Samaritan who actually stopped to see and attend to the stranger in the ditch who was wounded. The Samaritan of all uh, persons uh, then not only helped and gave first aid uh, to the wounded man on Jericho's road, but took that man to uh, an inn 
and paid up front for his care until he got well and told the innkeeper, if there's more expense when, I, when he gets well, I'll be sure to cover that. That is profound hospitality, which includes the healing power of hospitality. From the word hospitality, we get the word hospital. So hospitality being as deep and profound as it is, is also about healing. And uh, healing really does occur in many ways in relationships. Another great text in Luke's gospel is the great banquet that's recorded in uh, chapter 14, where the host of the banquet sent out word, an invitation, a guest list, all the guests uh, that on the list, on the specialty list, uh, had a reason they couldn't come to the banquet. And so the, the host or the uh, person uh, giving the banquet said to the helpers, uh, go out and find more. They said, we have, we did, and there's still room uh, in the banquet. And then the, the host of the banquet said, go out and, and bring in the, the poor, uh, bring in the crippled, bring in the different people so that my house may be full. That's the great banquet story in Luke 14 that uh, illustrates again uh, the nature of inclusive hospitality. Apostle Paul talked about this in our code of conduct in uh, Romans 12, uh, where he said to extend hospitality to strangers. Uh, he also said in uh, Romans 15, 7, uh, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you. So you see this theme running uh, throughout the life of Jesus, his ministry into the church and the ministry of the Apostle Paul. One of the great texts in Ephesians uh, chapter 2 uh, in the section verses 11 through 12 uh, says from, from Paul's uh, ministry, uh, we are now no longer strangers, but are members of the household of God. Again, that speaks to the ministry of hospitality. And then that great text in Hebrews 13, 1, that uh, asks us to be attentive uh, to strangers, to guests, because we may be entertaining angels as we entertain guests, even strangers. That's uh, Hebrews 13, 1. Again, an emphasis on blessing and hospitality and relationships. How do we do that? Well, we notice other people. We attend to them. We acknowledge them. We extend uh, conversation. We extend care, sharing. We listen to the other person. We enter into the stories of the other person as they enter into our stories. And in a sense, we make a home uh, for our guests, a home of faith, uh, hope, and love, as Paul would say, and in true uh, hospitality in the life of the church, we follow up and we stay with one another. So our life and ministry as hosts of God and hosts of God's world is, is so extensive and so deep and profound uh, that, that we must try to practice it as best we can going into our future. Uh, we do, in my opinion, we do this a lot already. It's just doing more of what we already know how to do. So our hospitality ministry needs to cover everything we do. It certainly needs to be a very thorough uh, and extensive part of how we behave on Sunday morning, uh, anticipating guests, uh, get it, being ready to welcome guests so that they feel they've come home and uh, found a place in which the love of God and the love of Jesus can work within them as it works within all of us. So uh, the, the, the ministry of blessing in session one and the ministry of hospitality in session two are foundational uh, to what we want to try to be as the mission of God as we discern our own mission. Well, this completes uh, session uh, two and uh, thank you for being with us by way of this condensed video version. I want to close us then with a prayer that is what we call the priestly prayer that's uh, very central to the life of Israel, to the Jewish people, and it's found in Scripture in Numbers 6, 
24 and, and 26, and you're familiar with it, and it goes this way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you, and please join us again in sessions going forward in Imagine.